This video will show how to create the following two small Rust programs. First, creating a new Rust file in an empty directory, implementing it with a trivial program, printing the classical phrase Hello World to the screen. Then the Hello World program will be replaced with another program, which receives input argument from the command line and also receives keyboard input from the user. This video is part of at least one playlist showing how to do the above with different programming languages. There should be a link to that playlist in the description below. Prerequisites. You, the viewer of this video, are assumed to have some skills in at least some programming language. I will not explain basic concepts such as what is a variable or what is an array or what is a for loop. Even if you have never written source code with Rust, you are assumed to be able to understand, for example, what this Rust code below does. In this video, I am using Windows 10, and I start by showing which version of Rust and Cargo I have installed. Cargo is a so-called package manager for Rust, which I do not use directly in this video. But anyway, I am showing here which version I have installed. The version of Cargo and the Rust compiler, Rust-C, is 1.57. The Windows command vir shows that I am starting from an empty directory. Now I create a new directory called Rust with the Windows command md. Then I navigate into the new directory with cd Rust. Then I start Visual Studio Code by typing code and a dot which is the path to the current directory. When Visual Studio Code has started, I create a new Rust file, arguments underscore inputs dot rs, in the new directory, Rust. I create a main function with fn main and implement it by calling println exclamation mark to print text on the screen. You can basically consider println exclamation mark as a function call, but it is actually a so-called macro, which is indicated by the exclamation mark at the end of the name. Now I am showing with the Windows command there that the Rust file has been created in the directory Rust. The program can now be compiled by using Rust C and then the file name. When the dir command is used again, you can see that an executable file has been created with the file extension .exe, and also a file with the extension .pdb that contains debugging information. When the .exe file is executed, you can see that the program displayed the output hello world on the screen, just as expected. Now I will replace the initial hello world implementation with a program that will receive and print arguments from the command line. The program will also ask the user to enter the name and will then print to the screen what the user typed. For this purpose, I have prepared some pseudocode that I will paste into the program, but within comments, since of course it would not be possible to execute. Then I will modify the code by changing it to Rust code that can be executed. Now I am showing how the program arguments will be provided to the program when it is executed. The arguments will be added after the name of the .exe file and then a space between each argument. So here I am showing three arguments for the program. Any program arguments are available through the args function in the standard library module std colon colon env. That function returns a struct args that implements a so-called trait called iterator, which contains the collect method, which returns a vector with strings. Then I iterate that vector in a for loop. But you can also loop through args without creating such a vector with a collect method, as you can see here in the inset image. Inside the loop, program arguments are printed to the screen with the macro print ln. The empty curly braces in the string is a placeholder for the contents of the variable in the second argument. And the content of that variable will replace the curly braces when the string is printed to the screen. Now I compile the program. 
when I execute it with three arguments, you can see that it does not work quite as expected. The very first so-called argument contains the name of the file being executed. Since I wanted to print only the actual program arguments, I am changing the code so that the variable that is iterated is a so-called slice that will only contain the arguments from the second argument from index one. The dot dot notation is used to create a so-called range from index one and up to and including the end of the vector, since no number is given after the two dots. The ampersand is used to make the created slice into a reference. Actually, it must be a reference, which means that if you try to compile without the ampersand, there will be a compilation error. When I then compile and execute the program again, you can see that now it works exactly as expected. Please note that now the exe file is not printed as the first program argument. Now I will implement the second part of the program, receiving input through the keyboard while the program is executed. The question, what is your name, is printed with the macro print instead of print ln, because I want the input prompt to appear on the same line. In other words, I do not want to print a line break character at the end which you will do when you are using the macro print ln. The input read from the keyboard will be put into a variable name, which I first declare with mute, because it must be a mutable variable, which is a variable with content that can be changed. In other words, a mutable variable is really a variable in the true sense of the word, as opposed to a so-called constant non-changeable variable which is actually a semantic contradiction. Then I call the function stdin in the standard model std colon colon io, which returns a struct stdin. stdin has a readline method that takes an argument that should be a mutable string. When the method is called, it will read a line from the so-called standard input and put it into the mutable string argument. Standard input usually means the keyboard. The method readline returns a type called result. And if you compile without using it somehow, then you get a warning from the compiler. I am using it in such a way that the method expect in the result type is called with a string argument that contains a part of the text that will be displayed if a problem occurs in the method readline. Then I try to print the content of the variable name in the same way as before with the macro print. When the program has been compiled, it is executed, but it does not work as expected. The input prompt is displayed before the program proceeds to the line in the code where the phrase, what is your name, is printed. The correct behavior would be that the question is displayed first, and then an input prompt is displayed on that line. This problem can be fixed by calling the method flush on the struct called stdout, which is returned by the stdout function in the standard model std colon colon io. The method flush returns an instance of the type result, and I use it in the same way as before by calling the method expect with a string argument that will be part of the error message if a problem would occur in the method flush. The method flush is implemented for stdout with a so-called trait called write, which must be available as you will soon see when I try to compile. The compilation fails with an error and as you can see, it is suggested that you add the trait called write. Therefore, I add use std colon colon io colon colon write. When I then compile, it works. And when I execute, it works almost as expected, but a line break too much is printed to the screen. Apparently, the variable name contains a line break character 
at the end, which therefore will be included when it, when it is printed to the screen and then causes an additional line. This problem can be solved by calling the method trim for the string variable name where it is printed to the screen with the macro print. When I then compile and execute the program again, you can see that it now works as expected, thanks to the string method trim.